turning out a barrel now a tropical uh, was downgraded to a tropical depression and the storm has left parts of Texas devastated with many areas underwater and others without power. The storm killed at least eight people, including seven in Texas. It also fueled destructive tornadoes. A massive tree ripped through one woman's home in Houston, killing her 73-year-old mother-in-law who was in bed. My son was screaming, Grandma, just see something. Like crying and telling my husband, go check on your mom. And he started freaking out. He was like, Grandma, he said, call 911. CBS News correspondent Janet Shamlian is in Houston, still reeling from the storm. Janet, such an emotional interview we just heard there. What are you seeing right now? Uh, good afternoon, Lindsay. I want to give you a look at this is downtown Houston, a downtown Houston street. It's right next to the city's convention center. And look at the trees snapped like a pretzel almost. And that's just one example. I mean, they're up and down these streets. So navigating this city is really challenging right now. And then let's talk about the top power. More than 2 million customers, Lindsay, without power on a day where the heat index is going to be above 100 degrees. And the main utility provider in the, in the area, Centerpoint, is telling us they'll have a million people back by the end of the day tomorrow. But that's still a long ways away. And that still leaves a lot of people on Thursday. Thursday without power. The floodwaters have indeed receded, but now it's about getting the debris off these streets, opening these arteries, and most of all, trying to get the power back on amid these really searing July temperatures here in Houston. Wow, so it sounds like crews are working as fast as they can to restore power, but what are officials doing in the meantime in triple-digit heat? Yeah, so they're opening cooling centers throughout the area uh, on behalf of Houston, uh, other counties in the area. I mean, there's I've seen a list of several dozen where people can go sort of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, most of these are multi-purpose centers, but some uh, churches are weighing in, like Lakewood Church is probably our largest mega church here in Houston. They are opening that huge facility until late tonight, and they're also sending out emergency teams with water into some of the neighborhoods. So it's sort of a not just the city and the counties, but uh, churches getting involved, uh, and all hands on deck effort, if you will. And that is really needed because this is just a terrible time to be without air conditioning in the city of Houston. You know, I want to uh, allow me to get a little personal with you. Uh, you're based in Houston, and you had told us yesterday when you were reporting, I believe, from Sugar Land that you were fielding calls from your husband about damage. I mean, what is, what is it like for you to be covering this but also living through it, and how are things in your world? Well, certainly, uh, you know, our experience is uh, far less than some of these stories that we have heard. But, yes, we're among those 2 million uh, families or customers in southeast Texas without power. Uh, we have a fence down. We have trees down. Um, we have tiles from the roof that are down. And, honestly, I haven't been home since the 4th of July because wow. I've been chasing the storm up the coast from Brownsville to South Padre Island, Port Lavaca, to Sugarland to now Houston, just a couple of miles away from my own home. But as you can imagine, like he said, the house is hot. You know, it, it's ridiculously uncomfortable. But we also have pets. And so, you know, it's just one of those things. I mean, for us, it's an inconvenience. But certainly for other people who, you know, need oxygen or have special needs, I mean, it is more than an inconvenience. It is, it is critical. Keeping it in perspective, but of course, we thank you being away from your family since July 4th so you can bring this to us. Janet Shamley, and thanks.